Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. We're going to be ranking the Dark Souls 3 bosses, including both DLCs from easiest to hardest. Before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I would be very thankful to you. So, Dark Souls 3. I have soloed every single boss here, and I am a melee player, and this is going to be a veteran perspective. If we made a list for my very first playthrough versus my latest, it would be very different stories. So we are going to focus on uh, veteran, and uh, yeah, so easiest boss in the game is probably going to be Ancient Wyvern for now. Um, this boss dies in one single plunging attack. You do not have to attack or acknowledge any of the various dragonling minions in the room. Just run right past them, climb up the ladder, hopefully you don't get chain axed, and uh, yeah, plunge attack to victory. Fight is over. And um, next up, we will have... Mm, yeah, okay. So, again, first playthrough. This was honestly like an A for me in my first playthrough. Kind of embarrassing. It's because I'd never played an action RPG in my life. In my life. But uh, now it's it's more like a D now. Uh, Curse Rod of Great Wood. There's a very specific strategy to do. You uh, put on that gold pine... Or no, you put on the fire enchantment. And then you attack the little egg safe egg sacks which are in predetermined locations so this fight basically always goes the same now every single time it kills all of the minions in the first phase for you and um, yeah the hand grab can be annoying but it will not one shot you you will have time to recover so curse rotted is not uh, not going to stack up to the other places of course high lord wool as well is also not going to be challenging at all um, he is a kind of gimmick fight that uh, ends really quickly uh, just like Curse Rotted, he has predetermined locations, and there's like a very concrete strategy of what to do. Uh, just hitting the bracelets, knocking him back, hitting the bracelets some more, and then the fight's over. The Poison Fog can be annoying, but uh, if you know where to stand, then you will be fine. And uh, most of his like unique abilities never, ever come to fruition. Like It's very rare to see him uh, call skeleton minions, or even to summon his sword is super rare. So, yeah, most of the cool things about him never come to light because you kill him so fast. We have Yorm the Giant, who's going to be D tier as well. Yorm the Giant's going to go... Probably right there. Yeah, Yorm the Giant is another gimmick fight. You use the Storm Ruler from Demon Souls. Uh, you kill him about uh, in about five attacks with the Storm Ruler. You do kind of have to dodge here and there, uh, but there's also a pretty set strategy. You just want to make sure when you're locking onto him that you're aiming at the head specifically and you will stun him for longer periods of time. And you also don't want to double attack him. You want to let him get back up and then hit him to re-stun him again. So Yorm is uh, pretty much, you know, you could do it at negative soul levels. Like, you know, soul level one runs. Well, this is one you could do at negative soul level run if that was somehow a thing. Um, Ayudic Skandir, the tutorial boss. I... So this is veteran perspective, right? I think this guy is honestly like A, if you've never played a Dark Souls game in your life, which is what I did. Um, like I almost stopped playing right then and there when I was playing this game for the first time. But if you overcome it, then you will kind of be hooked. You'll you'll be very much addicted after that. But this is veteran perspective. So Iudix is actually going to be here uh, for the veteran perspective. It's actually weird for me to put him there, but I'm going to just because... You know, you can parry him if you want to. His uh, giant beast mode never hits you, really. You just walk to his right. And uh, every single fight with him goes the same. There's no RNG or anything here. It's always the same every single time. So very easy. Okay, is that it for D? Maybe. Possibly. No. Wait. No, it's not. Because of Vort. We'll put Vort higher than Curse Rotted, I guess? Right? No, because honestly, no. I, I think Curse Rod is slightly scarier than Vort is. Vort is a big booty enemy that you just smack his butt left and right, and his attacks are very telegraphed, and they always swing over you. Since his mace is bigger than the player model itself, he'll just like swing over you half the time. Uh, if you put on some gold pine resin, you will destroy this guy. And his frost breath attack is... Uh, was mis was misused. The frost attack just leaves him way too vulnerable. The charges are kind of scary, but... I mean, I can't die to this boss anymore, so we're going to have to put it in D. Now is it it? 
The Deacons of the Deep. You know what? Just for some variety, we'll go ahead and put this in the C tier. More like an honorable C. It is kind of a D. But uh, Deacons of the Deep. Still still a little bit annoying to this day. Uh, you have the giant curse spell, which will occasionally will pop off for me. Um, I can dodge it still, but sometimes that orb can be scary. Uh, you've got the, sometimes the, the fire orbs will go, like the red glow will go on top of the fat guys instead of the small guys, which means we'll take longer to kill. Sometimes you'll be um, backstabbing random deacons you don't want to be backstabbing. And uh, this is a fight that is way easier if you use alluring skulls but it's honestly so easy that i usually don't just because it's already free so i don't want to make it even more free but still deacons i think uh we'll just we'll go ahead and throw it in c but it probably belongs in d to be honest um yeah no it, it belongs in d <laughs> let's go ahead and throw it there just because i forgot about alluring skulls alluring skulls are gonna have to make that d because i did include you know for example the blood star beast from bloodborne i did include uh, pungent blood cocktails. So if I'm going to include cocktails for that ranking, I'm going to have to include alluring skulls for this ranking. Um, the Crystal Sage is going to be our first for sure C tier. This is a fight that punishes people who play slow and award, rewards people who play fast. So what you want to do is stick to him like glue. R1 spam. If you're feeling crazy, you can even parry his sword attack. And you want to try and prevent him from teleporting at all by keeping that little homing soul mass active. But assuming you don't keep the homing soul mass active, he will summon himself into various clones. And it can kill you pretty quickly. Uh, luckily, you know which one's the real one because it's purple. But uh, it's still, it's a kind of a glass cannon fight. It's still capable of killing you pretty quickly if you make a mistake by accident. Um... What is that one? Osiris. Okay. I think we'll go for Old Demon King next. Old Demon King, this is a boss that I I and most people will fight later into the playthrough. Uh, technically, you could fight this even before Wolnir. It's much more smart to do it after Wolnir, but you could do it before Wolnir if you wanted. Um, in which case, it is a little bit harder, but still, it's not that, it's not that bad. He is a uh, very slow attacking telegraphed enemy. His biggest scare is uh, when he summons sort of meteors from the sky. And also when you get into 5% HP, he will do a one-shot AoE explosion before he just kind of kicks the kicks the bucket and is done. But uh, Demon King is just not really notorious for giving anyone any trouble, and no exception with me. I don't think I've ever really struggled with this, aside from my first playthrough. Um, and specifically my first playthrough because I was fighting the bosses in chronological order, so I did fight it before Wolnir. So it was it was harder there, but it was still not that bad. Um, Half Light. Half Light, I guess, can be B, or should it be C? Um, I mean, if I'm being honest with myself, I'm sure most people would put it in B, but if I'm being honest with myself, I think it's C. The player version, don't have a ton of experience with the player version, but usually they're fine. I think I've the one person I went against was uh, kind of a noob. But uh, the NPC version is a regular NPC, which means that you can kind of stun lock him with R1 spam. You can backstab, right? I believe you can backstab. Um, the only issue, I guess, in this fight is the painting, the curved... What are they called? The Dark Souls 1 and Orlando painting guardians. Um, but if you get rid of them, the fight's basically yours. And um, yeah, I don't know. There is there is a lot to know about it, but it's it's DLC number two. You're going to have 15 Estus plus 10 or whatever the maximum is. So you're going to be fine. I don't think I've ever struggled with Half-Life per, Half personally. I think I did it under three tries in my first... Yeah, I did it under three tries on my first playthrough of the DLC completely blind so it was not a hard at all and every subsequent time i just one shot it um <laughs> champion gundir for me personally is a b i know some most people would probably put him an a for me personally he's a b um just because the parry is super reliable and uh it's just never giving me that much trouble i think because i like i i play bloodborne right like if you've if you've completed Bloodborne, then you'll be able to handle an enemy like this. But if your experience comes from Dark Souls one and two exclusively, you'll probably have some more issues here. He is just extremely fast, has a few uh, bullshit tracking moves, but once you learn how to parry and how to get good, really, this is this is weirdly kind of a damageless fight for me a lot. 
just because I've done him so many times. He is just an empowered version of Ayub Iskandir. Um, does not live up to the hype, in my opinion. Um, the Abyss Watchers will put in B, but they kind of belong in C. Again, this is one of those like kind of honest to myself things, but to be honest, though, the fire phase is still somewhat scary, right? But the fact is, Abyss Watchers cannot go higher because they can be backstabbed, they have no HP at all, and the first phase is really easy because you get a friend. So really, the fire phase is the only uh, you know hard one, but it's definitely doable. So I'll give it like an honorary B. I, I would say Abyss Watchers is still scarier than Half-Light. I still agree with that statement. Uh, so yeah, this list is very personalized. This is absolutely not going to be like the popular opinion. I'm not just copying what the community thinks. This is 100% my brain only and what I genuinely believe. And I'm, I'm elaborating on some of the ones that I know people are going to get like mad about. So that's that was one of the ones. Both of these, like Half-Light and those two were both ones that people would put higher probably, but just not for me. Um, let's go for probably Dancer next. We'll put this in top of B. Dancer is an interesting fight. Uh, it's a little bit of a, it's a literal dance, right? It's a slow, methodical kind of roll, attack once, roll, attack once. Um, but once you kind of understand the move set and how everything works, it's not that bad. Uh, there's plenty of like bad moves that you can punish. And even the spin, you can just hug her ass the entire time during the spin and the spin will not even hit you once. So just the fact, I just, this is just one more experience. The more experience I have, the less hard Dancer is now. Um, the Champion Grave Tender and the, uh, this one's a little bit tricky. I'm thinking there, but personally I find it more terrifying than these two. But is it actually harder? Probably not. Um, yeah, I don't. It's probably not harder than those two, even though I might personally find it slightly more intimidating. Um, this is the Ashes of Arendelle first boss, and it is a homage to Sif, kind of. And really, what you do here is, first of all, the first phase is just killing the dogs that start. That's usually not a problem at all. It's not like Capra Demon dogs. It's just they're very separated. So you kill off the three dogs. Then you engage combat with the NPC who you're going to backstab. You are going to stun lock with R1s. And um, depending on RNG, you will hopefully have him dead before the wolf even comes alive. Uh, most of the time he will die. But sometimes he'll just turtle behind his shield. But hopefully he dies. And then it's going to be a 1v1 against the wolf which is sort of like a vort reskin um so basically identical to vort after that so it's not that bad if we're being honest not that bad okay osiris is not that bad either i would put him probably below the the wolf so osiris he has one single bullshit move which is the a sort of watchdogs from bloodborne move where he um instantly charges with no telegraph and he's capable of one-shotting you but I personally save this boss for a little bit later in my playthrough, so I can usually survive that attack. So I, I, it's more like a two-shot for me. And his moveset's just kind of slow and doable, right? And he's kind of got like a frost breath thing that Vort does, where he leaves himself super exposed when he's doing his little frost breath. So he's not a problem. Um, I would say this boss is harder if you have the sound on. This is a boss I'd recommend turning the music off and probably turning dialogue off as well. Even though the song's badass and the voice acting's badass, uh, it will be harder with the music on because it's much more stress and anxiety inducing. Okay. We have uh, Dragon Slayer Knight. I would put him maybe there. Or is Gundir worse? No, I would put him there personally. Uh, the Moonlight. So. I don't like the butterfly phase. I don't think anyone does really. The butterflies are annoying, but other than the butterflies, he is just a fair fight. There's no BS here. He is a fair fight with extremely telegraphed moves. Probably the single most highly telegraphed attacks of the entire franchise. Um, so you always know what he's doing at all times, and it's just doable. It's very fair, and it's very doable, so we'll go ahead and put it somewhat in the middle of the pack there. Okay, we could... No, Aldrich is not going to go in A. Aldrich is going to go in B. We will put this... 
I'm going to put it there personally, and I'm going to move the Abyss Watchers down to C, because I don't personally struggle with it at all, and I want it to be more even. Um, so Aldrich, very hard when you're new to the game, very easy once you're experienced. What you want to do is bait out Aldrich's melee attacks over and over again. Make sure you don't get the arrows. That's RNG dependent, but you can sort of control it a tiny bit as long as your R1 spamming with your highest bu damaging buffs on. So you're going to damage buff, R1 spam his tail, watch for the teleport so you don't take the shadow dark damage, and otherwise you just want to close the distance as quickly as possible. He will always teleport to the opposite corner of the room diagonally that you're in, so you always know where he's going to teleport to as well. But your objective is to close the distance as quickly as possible, hope you don't get arrows, and then just end the fight as quickly as you can. Okay. So yeah, Abyss Watcher C tier. I'm sorry. It's it's just, I would be lying if I said Abyss Watchers could kill me now. Um, that was more like peer pressure me putting in B because <laughs> I knew people struggled with this. So let's go ahead for Pontiff Sullivan and A tier. He is a dual wielding, fast attacking, tall kind of camera boss. Not exactly camera boss, but a little bit of a camera boss. And um, his second phase is easier because the clone will tell you what he's about to do. But even the clone can be an issue sometimes. So Pontiff is a major roadblock for a lot of the players at this game. Um, I found him slightly easier than most, but he's still no pushover. He hits really hard, hits really fast, and his combos are like seven combos, you know? Like he'll do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know? Like he'll never stop attacking. It's like he doesn't have a stamina bar. But uh, not impossible, just notoriously hard, and I, I am inclined to agree. Next up, we'll have Nameless King, who was the OG kind of face of the game. Oh, it's the hardest thing ever, blah, blah, blah. Um, not really. I Is is Pontiff harder? Maybe. I think Pontiff might be harder for a veteran. But also, yeah, it's close. I'm going to go ahead and say no, just because I hate the camera boss. First phase, King of the Storm sucks. Uh, second phase is better. There are some very punishable moves, like when he does a lightning slam in front of him. Uh, you do not want to create distance between him. You want to be close to him at all times. But uh, he has some weird timings. It get, it definitely, this is a boss that takes some getting used to. He attacks a lot. He like purposely delays his swings, which throws your rolls off. But eventually you'll get it down, you'll get used to it, and it's not so bad. And also you'll get a few viscerals on him during the second phase as well. Actually, the first phase as well, right? You'll get a lot of viscerals on this guy, uh, like riposte, so that's good. All right. Soul of Cinder. Mm, yeah, okay. I mean, if you asked me this uh, like seven years ago, I would not have agreed, but... I do think Soul Cinder is slightly edges Nameless King out. Uh, Soul Cinder has an awful scimitar pyromancer phase in the first fight in the first phase, and the second phase has that wombo combo, of course, uh, which you can kind of roll through, but not really. But uh, yeah, I think there's a little bit more to know and learn about Soul of Cinder, so I personally put him a little bit higher than Nameless King, and I, I usually fight him before Nameless King as well. So as far as my game route goes, I'm usually higher leveled for this and lower leveled for this. Okay, we're down to one, two, three, four, five, five foes, five guys left, and I know four of these are going to be S, right? Or three of them for sure, two of them I'm thinking about. Let's go ahead and start with the ones that I know for sure are going to be S. So Dark Eater Madir is for sure going to be S. He has the largest health pool of any boss in the From Software games other than Elden Ring maybe. I think Elden Ring might have a field boss or two with higher health. But as far as the main games go, Dark Souls Trilogy, this is the highest H pool enemy of any enemy in the game uh, in the series. So... His health bar is huge. You cannot end this fight quickly. There's not really any cheese or gimmickry. You just have to learn his moveset and get good. That's how you overcome Madir. Only attack the head. Do not attack the feet. So only attack the head. Hope you get a visceral towards the end of the fight. And um, yeah, just pray that you're not going to get instantly killed by fire or anything like that. Uh, he's kind of like the big brother of um, the spiritual successor to Black Dragon Calamite and Sin. So he is like the the hardest dragon 
fight they've ever made, but it's also like the most readable one. You can really read. Well, no, Calamite's more readable, but he Midir still. You can kind of watch what he's doing at all times and know what he's about to do. So, but he's still no no pushover. Even if you use like a dragon bane weaponry or demon weaponry or whatever it's called, you are not going to deal a lot of damage to him. So it takes it's a long endurance fight that requires you to get good. And I have, yeah, I just want to reiterate, I have soloed every single boss here just because in Dark Souls 2, there were a couple bosses I didn't, but here I have soloed all these. Okay, so, and yeah, when I soloed Midir for the first time, I felt so accomplished. All right, so I know for a fact Sister Frida is going to be S tier. I'm thinking about putting her higher than Midir, but I don't think I will just because she is an NPC, which means she can be stunlocked with R1 and she can be backstabbed. For those two reasons, I'm going to put her lower than Midir. But uh, so the first two phases, honestly, not a problem. First phase is a joke. Second phase, annoying but doable. Third phase is where the heat kicks in. We fight Black Flame Frida, and um, she's just never really resonated with me personally, that phase of the fight. Uh, I know she is, like, logically, I know that you can study her moveset and kind of prepare a game plan with what to do with her, but I usually just wing it and hope for the best, and it's never fun. So Black Flame Frida is very hard. I only am able to overcome her because of the backstab. The fact that I can backstab her is the only reason I can beat this boss by myself. Um, and also I mentioned difficulty-wise, this is the only boss in the series other than Elden Ring, I think, and other than Demon Souls, where an NPC is... Um, no, wait, maybe not even Demon Souls, right? Basically, this boss has an NPC summon sign without being embered. So you don't have to have, like... You literally, the game's telling you, we, we, we suggest you use an NPC. I don't use it, but I'm just saying, the fact that this boss lets you use an NPC without being kindled or embered should tell you how hard it is. Okay, next up, and everyone has said this statement as well, and I agree with it. This is like a Bloodborne enemy trapped in the Dark Souls 3 engine. So you, she's just way too fast. Um, Slave Knight Gale is going to be the lowest in our S, but I'm still going to give him like an honorary S. Uh, the reason I say honorary is because I honestly killed this guy. I don't know if it was my first try or like third, but it was under three tries. My first ever playthrough of that DLC blind. And I was like, is that it? And and it was over. So Slave Night Gale has not nearly lived up to the hype that people have built up for him, but I will still respect him and say that he is uh, tough. He is very fast, hits very hard. There's a lot, way too many moves. So I wouldn't even bother trying to like study him. There's way too many things going on. Uh, multi-phased. First phase is a bit harder than the second one, but second one's no pushover. You have that annoying cape constantly hitting you through, damaging you through your shield. So, yeah. And Gale's gonna get, like, an honorary S, but kind of, like, top of A, to be honest for me personally. Alright, we'll go for Demon Princes next, who are going to be higher than Gale for me. That's just personal preference. Most people would disagree with that. But just for me personally, I'm gonna put the demons higher. I just think they're irritating. Um... Fighting two of these giant camera bosses simultaneously, you have to remember which color to kill first so that you get the good second phase. Uh, I've just never liked it. I don't like this fight. I don't enjoy it. And I've always struggled with it and thought it was hard. So I, I don't like this fight, and it is very difficult. Our last thing, I will go with an A. I was thinking about S, but we'll go with an A. So for me, this is going to be higher than Soul Cinder for sure. Uh, he's basically... <sighs> What what do we so you have to ask yourself do I want to stay locked on or not after you've made that decision you are going to have to deal with a teleporting duo where spells are constantly being flung at you while melee attacks are also connecting with you he's got weird timings like Nameless King he's got like the high damage of Gale he's got kind of everything that a boss needs to kill the player and he kills me a lot even on recurrent playthroughs I've gotten a lot better at him but I'm by no means I by no means have perfected him at all. There's still a lot to learn about it. Um, like you can kind of manipulate his teleports whether you're locked on or not. I'm not an expert at that, but I do know that that's a thing. So there's a lot to uh, there's a lot to learn about this, and uh, you, this is definitely a boss you have to get good on. So there's my Dark Souls three tier list, easiest to hardest. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.